in continuation to phylum Womycota, the next order is uh, Peronosporales. It is a very important order after Pithiales. Not after Pithiales. If you ask me, the most important uh, order that comes under uh, uh, Womycota is uh, Peronosporales, then followed by then next one is uh, Pithium. So let's uh, we'll see the different kinds of important characters and the important fungi comes under. I'm in Shankar Reddy, PhD Plant Pathology. So these are all the general uh, taxonomic classification that is a cricketal classification. This is a saprolignia we have already discussed. Pithium is also fine. Uh, and now we are going to discuss uh, Peronosporales. In the recent classification, uh, this Pithium is also classified under this uh, 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 this Peronosporales only. Don't worry about it. Uh, Pithium actually classified under Peronosporales only. Don't worry about this classification which is changing all the stuff. You remember and uh, uh, have the knowledge about the the fungi and their general properties are maybe various kinds of disease caused by even though they are shifting into different classes or different orders or different families the general characters are their characteristics are not going to change right let them change wherever they want to put it in based on their dna analysis based on the off or based on there is a something fungal tree of life based on whatever the characters they are thinking they can let them do classification but the general characters is not going to change right before the pithium is under pithiales now the pithium is under peronosporales what happened the characters remain same, right? His characters remain same and it's nothing is going to impact. But just they are shifting here and there based on the DNA analysis or maybe based on the various other characters or based on the spore production or morphology, various kinds of things they do consider. But don't worry about all the stuff. You just remember the general characters and they're along with their uh, overall properties and characteristics. Now we'll see one by one. So before, uh, as I told you, this phylum Mumekota contains eight orders, Saproligneals, Pithiales, that we have already discussed, uh, Saproligneals and Pithiales. Now it's uh, turn for uh, Peronosporales. Uh, Peronosporales are generally contains uh, two families, Albuginaceae and Peronosporaceae. So now we'll see what are all the fungi that comes under Albuginaceae, what are all the fungi that comes under Peronosporaceae. So irrespective of the families, the important genus that we are going to discuss in the Peronosporales are Albugo, Pytoptora, Peronospora, Pseudoperonospora, Plasmopora, Besidiopora, Bremia, and the last one is Slerospora. Don't confuse Slerospora according to the classification of Kirkatal. This is actually comes under Slerosporales. As I told you, uh, a Kirkatal classification now uh, we are going to follow Kirkatal classification only but a little bit of variations or little bit of changes according to the present system also that I am following right now. So this Slerospora is actually comes under Slerosporales. Again uh, in detail about this Slerospora I am going to explain in Slerosporales also there is nothing to worry about it. But uh, why I placed it here that I will tell you at the end of the slides or that is tell you at the end of this uh, uh, lecture. As I told you, two families are there. The first one is Albuginaceae, second one is Peronospore. Let's start with the Albuginaceae. The first family is Albuginaceae. So generally, the white rust causing genera or white rust causing fungi comes under this Albuginaceae. Uh, they are obligate parasites, so generally infects vascular plants. And there are different kinds of white rust and other kinds of disease that is caused by Albuginaceae. Uh, the most important fungi is Albugo uh, generally causes uh, white rust of amaranthus and uh, Albugo hypomia pandurene uh, which causes uh, sweet potato white rust. Uh, some other kinds of white rust that I have mentioned in the uh, later slides. Uh, these are all the genus, important genus uh, Albugo, uh, white rust of brassicae, Albugo candida, white rust of uh, sweet potatoes, Albugo hypomia pandurata, uh, spinach white rust which is caused by Albugo occidentalis. Uh, the last one is the white rust of Portoloca, which is caused by Albugo portulosi. Uh, so these are all the different kinds of uh, fungi uh, uh, diseases which are caused by the genera of uh, Albugo. Uh, the most important thing generally uh, we used to study is this uh, white rust of Brassicae, generally the white rust of Amaranthus, right? So that is caused by Albugo candida. So this is general uh, life, cycle of, uh, life cycle of Albugo candida. I'm not going to explain in detail about all this uh, life cycle of Albugo candida. Again, the juice pores are produced. Uh, juice pores are insisted and again they germinate and again they start to infect. Here uh, we can see the Ugonium and Anthridium come in contact with each other. Exchange of gametes again, Ugo spore is released again from uh, uh, vesicle. All those things will be formed here. Uh, but a uh, couple of important points I will tell you. This uh, Albugo candida, this Albugo generally produces knob-like For example, you can take this. 
uh knob like means such kind of this this like a b- grape bunch like uh, like so knob like a story is produced by this uh, albuo candida and you can also see the chains of sporangia we can observe here the sporangia is actually produced on chains that's why it's known as the chains of sporangia so chains of sporangia production of chains of sporangia is the special feature of albuo species and uh, knob like castor is also the production uh, the special feature of uh, albugo species uh, that is the two important points so that we must consider in this life cycle uh, in the next so peronosporaceae the albuginaceae already finished uh, first family is already finished the second family is uh, peronosporaceae uh, this peronosporaceae can surround around 20 genera around 365 species are there uh generally this uh, sporange vary uh, vary in size uh, shape and uh, uh, size generally so globus kind of uh, sporange can be produced in pithium when it comes to pythoptera it's a lemon kind of sporange is produced so the important genera that we are going to discuss in this peronosporaceae albugo is already finished that comes under albuginaceae that's why i strike it out and the next one is the pythoptera peronospora pseudoperonospora plasmopora basidiopora bremia and sclerospora so generally uh, this last six genera generally caused by downy mildews so other genera is also causes downy mildews uh, but uh, the diseases which are caused by especially this five genera or six genera is called true downy mildews or uh, i can say uh, original kind of downy mildews or we can call it true downy mildews rather than original so true downy mildew is the original terminology and some other fungi will produce uh, pseudo kind of uh, downy mildews uh, but these all genera are comes under this peronospora uh, produces a true kind of downy mildews now we will we'll discuss one by one the first one is the genus uh, pythoptera so the genus pythoptera was created by antoine d barry in 1876 uh, with the discovery of the lead blade of potato uh, that is the exact reason or the most important reason for the initiation or creation of a new branch a separate branch of science that is called plant pathology so this pythoptera generally causes uh, caused iris formin in 1845 that is is a uh, uh, pythoptera infestans uh, we can call it a lead blade of uh, potato so the name pythoptera means pyto means plant thora means destroyer it is a greek terminology generally pythoptera means plant destroyer because it is destroying the entire plant that's why it's known as plant destroyer and most of the species belonging to this pythoptera genus are highly destructive which means if it comes that's it majority of the yield losses we can uh, sense it so several pythoptera species uh, uh, and few of them are related to actually pythium then can cause the uh, diebacks and sudden uh, uh, death diseases on trees and this pythoptera generally sometimes very little cases it also causes uh, uh, diebacks uh, sudden deaths uh, blights and as well as uh, damping ups also very rare cases uh, this uh, generally this pythoptera juice spore is uh, produced in the temperature of 12 to 15 and the gem tube uh, production it requires uh, around 20 degrees or just above the 20 degrees celsius and the production of a spore and jet requires around 17 degrees celsius this is about uh, uh, general characters of this uh, pythoptera and on uh, anton d barry is a very a pioneer who have uh, 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 phenomenal work on this uh, pythoptera that leads to the initiation of a new branch called pyto uh, uh, plant pathology so the genus pythoptera contains generally 65 species important uh, 65 species so these are all the diseases caused by pythoptera species various important diseases uh, rubber abnormal leaf fall which is caused by pythoptera palmivora red gram stem blade which is caused by pythoptera drusillaria pharma species kajani gingelly leaf and stem blade which is caused by pythoptera parasitica var sesame castor seedling blade very important one uh, which is caused by pythoptera parasitica this is a castor seedling blade which was uh, Uh, the disease was actually discovered by jf daster he is an indian scientist uh, especially renowned for the establishment of pythoptera genera in india and tobacco black shank pythoptera parasitica var nicotiana arica nut koliroga mahali disease pythoptera arike coconut bud rot which is caused by pythoptera palmivora citrus gummosis it's a very interesting one generally majority of the diseases are caused by one or two species but the citrus gummosis is caused by six species of pythoptera pythoptera parasitica pythoptera palmivora citroptera hibernalis syringa and cactorum these are all the six species which is responsible for citrus gummosis apple collar rot pythoptera cactorum limobin downy mildew pythoptera fasciolae cocoa black pod rot this is also important disease which is caused by pythoptera pamivora pepper fruit fruit rot fruit rot which is caused by pythoptera capsicum colocasia pythoptera leblet pythoptera colocasia this is also important disease colocasia com rot which is caused by uh, pythoptera 
సినమోమిక్ కాడమం క్యాప్సూల్ రాట్ అజ్గుల్ డిసీజ్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్రూట్ రాట్ పైట్ ఆఫ్ ద మెయిడి బీటల్ వైన్ ఫ్రూట్ రాట్ ఆర్ లీఫ్ రాట్ పైట్ ఆఫ్ ద పారాసిట్ కేవర్ పైపరీన సినమం స్ట్రైప్ క్యాంకర్ ఆర్ బార్క్ క్యాంకర్ విచ్ ఇస్ కాస్ పైట్ ఆఫ్ ద సినమోమి వెన్నెల సారీ వెనిల బీన్ రాడ్ విచ్ ఇస్ కాస్ పైట్ ఆఫ్ ద స్పీసీస్ దీస్ ఆర్ ఆల్ ద మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ స్పీసీస్ ఆఫ్ పైట్ ఆఫ్ ద రా దట్ ఈస్ జనరల్ ఎన్కౌంటర్డ్ విత్ వేరియస్ కైండ్స్ ఆఫ్ ప్లాంట్ డిసీజ్ దీస్ ఆర్ ఆల్ ద లిస్ట్ ఆఫ్ పైట్ ఆఫ్ ద రా డిసీజెస్ ఆన్ వేరియస్ క్రాప్స్ now you'll see the life cycle of a part of their infestations uh, just in a overall view this uh, is generally it comes under domain eukarya kingdom chromista phylum umycota class umycetes order perennosporals genus part of their and the species is infestations and before entering into the life cycle let's go through the history uh, the pathogen actually the what was first this uh, lead blight of pathogen was first described by mj berkeley but he don't know whether this is a uh, part of the genus which is caused by the fungi all those things that he don't know but the life cycle was discovered by anton d berry only and named the fungi as a phytophthora infestans i told you that phyto means plant thora means destroyer phytophthora means plant destroyer how plant pathology started how plant pathology evolved as a separate branch what is plant pathology why we need to plant study plant pathology what is the exact reason behind the studying of a new branch of science that is called plant pathology all those things that i have published a, uh, a video uh, a couple of days before uh, that i mentioned the link in the description section as well as the link mentioned here also if you guys want you can also go through this link uh, so that you will understand why we need to study plant pathology what is plant pathology how exactly uh what exactly the plan uh, reason behind the initiation of a new branch of science where it has the roots and all those things that i have especially uh, produced in a very detailed description around 40 minutes video that i have published especially on this uh, uh initiation of a new branch or a study of this uh, plant diseases how, how it is initiated and all those things so if you guys are interested you just please go through the uh, link generally if you see the symptoms initially water soaked lesions can be observed uh, appeared uh, later uh, the water soaked lesions coalesces and blight like symptoms can be appeared on the leaf if you see the uh, infected tubers uh, entire rotting i will tell you a, i will tell you in a simple terminology is rotting of tubers entire uh, uh, tuber rots and emits a foul smell or some kind of uh, a bad kind of smell it can produce so these are all the general symptoms in leaves and as well as tubers if you see the reproduction this reproduction is of two types sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction let's start with asexual reproduction asexual reproduction generally it will produce sporangia i think we have already discussed it produce a lemon shaped sporangia and the branches are zigzag branches so branches are generally zigzag branches and it produce a lemon shaped sporangia so the mycelium is uh, all uh, umycota group of fungi produces a mycelium is called the cenocytic mycelium or aseptate mycelium or non septate mycelium but it produce hostoria uh, the generally the hostoria is like a finger like hostoria if you see pithium pithium produces no hostoria but this part of the produces hostoria that to finger like hostoria and the shape of the sporangia is a lemon shaped uh, when it comes to this uh, part of the red blight and later what will happen in the favorable environmental conditions at low temperature the juice spore production happens such as below the 15 degree centigrade and the juice spore starts to produce uh, which are actually biflagellate uh, anterior tensile and posterior biplash types and when unfavorable environmental conditions occur uh, this juice spores uh, insists uh, again they starts to produce mycelium and this uh, cycle continues this is asexual reproduction when it comes to sexual reproduction sexual reproduction is of uh, oogamous type where uh, female reproductive organ is called anthridium male reproductive organ is called uh, sorry female reproductive organ is called oogonium male reproductive organ is called anthridium they are coming in contact and there is a small tube is formed that is called a fertilization tube and the exchange of gametes will takes place and the zygote is formed this is common phenomenon if you take uh, all womb mycota group of fungi but i will tell you some important features here female reproductive organ that is a oogonia passes through the anthridium and form a globose structure above the anthridium imagine this is the male reproductive organ anthridium this female reproductive organ passes through the anthridium and form a globose structure above the anthridium is known as amphigynous type of anthridium it's a very very important for, uh, feature that we can consider but when it comes to pithium uh, pithium is like produces vesicle that is a special feature when it comes to pite of the right it is produce amphigynous type of anthridium whereas uh, pithium produces a paragynous type of anthridium paragynous means where male and female lies side by side so that is called uh, paragynous para means side by side amphigynous means 
female reproductive organ passes through the anthridium and form a globo structure above the anthridium is known as amphigenous type of anthridium and again this uh, oospore is formed uh, during favorable conditions uh, uh, it starts to germinate if it is unfavorable conditions uh, they insist and uh, producing a thick wall around itself they insist this is actually sexual and asexual reproduction happens so the mode of spread if primary spread is uh, infected tubers and the secondary spread is uh, rain splash and winds general juice spores favorable conditions like the fungal growth 16 to 20 degrees centigrade is required for sporangial production generally 50 18 to 24 and the juice spore production 12 to 20 degrees uh, are generally the favorable conditions for the management there are plenty of management uh, using of copper fungicides like uh, uh, uses of uh, free propagative material a uh, spraying of mancozib and xenop 0.2 percent and the resistant varieties like kufri navin kufri jeevan kufri alendra uh, alankar uh, kufri kansi garo kufri moti there are various kinds of resistant varieties are one so kufri is the village or area name where uh, central uh, in indian potato research is located at shimla uh, the village is probably kufri that's why every variety starts with the kufri it's like a trade name so this is the life cycle as i told you uh, from mycelium the sporangia spore uh, started lemon shaped sporangia uh, juice spores are produced unfavorable times insists again it will come to mycelium and continues sexual reproduction is called gamete angel contact type uh, then generally uh, uh, female reproductive organ passes through the anthridium form a global structure above the anthridium so that is called amphigenous type of anthridium that is one of the special feature so this is about the life cycle so if we see the reproductive structures of Phytophthora cactorum, this is the sporangia. If we observe here, we can see a lemon shaped, one kind of lemon species will produce this kind of shape, right? So lemon shaped sporangia. And the second one is the chlamydospores. This is the chlamydospores. And the third one is the oospores, so showing this paragonous type of anthridium. Uh, this is a, actually uh, all Phytophthora species produce this amphigenous type of anthridium only. There is one species of uh, Pytophthora, probably Pytophthora cactorum. I am not sure. Probably Pytophthora cactorum that can produce uh, a paragonous type of anthridium. But the majority of this Pytophthora produces amphigenous type of anthridium only. Uh, if you see this oospore with uh, amphigenous type of fertilization, amphigenous type of anthridium, we can observe here. Pytophthora sporangial population. So in the previous slides itself, we discussed uh, Pytophthora produces a lemon-shaped sporangia, right? So in the lemon shaped sporangia also, based on the papillation, there are three kinds are there. Papillate, semi-papillate, non-papillate. Papillate in the sense, there are some kind of outgrowth or some kind of bulge-like structure which is present above the sporangia, that is called papillation, okay? So there are three types of papillation that we can observe on the Pytophthora. Papillate, semi-papillate, non-papillate. Papillate in the sense, we can see production of a distinct papilla at the distal end of the sporangium. At the end of the sporangium, we can see papilla. This is a papillate. We can see small uh, uh, nipple-like structure that is uh, uh, outgrowth, right? So that is called papillate or production of some kind of papilla. That is called the presence of papillate is called papillate. Generally, part of the cactorum, part of the capsaceae, part of the citroptera, it produces a papillate kind of sporangium. When it comes to semi-papillate, semi in the sense partially papillate half papillate you can see half papillate right so that is semi papillate uh, produced by pytophthora and pytophthora colocasia pytophthora infestans generally produces uh, semi papillate kind of uh, sporangia non papillate which means which is no papilla we can observe no papilla here right so no distinct conspicuous papilla or no papilla at the end of the sporangium so best example is pytophthora cinnamomy is the example this is the very different kinds of uh, a sporangial papillation. Uh, we can see here a Pytophthora palmivora juice spores. How it exactly we can see it is a papillate. We can observe papillation here, right? And we can also here see papillation Pytophthora palmivora. Uh, so it contains a papilla, right? So this is a, a, a typical example of papillation. And this sporangial spore, as I told you, dichotomously branched, right? Again, the spore morphology, again, this uh, sporangial spore morphology, there are again some types. A uh, simple or unbranched, this is the example of simple, no branches, Pytophthora cactorum. Compound are irregularly branched or dichotomously branched, we can see dichotomously branched are like uh, twin branches. Pytophthora capsaicea, Pytophthora citroptera, Pytophthora colocasia. Umbellate, this is the umbellate like umbrella having a, a side by side different branches. Pytophthora capsic and Pytophthora morinde. Sympodial branches, we can see sympodially branched uh, one by one, like uh, one branch again from that branch another branch came. 
like from that branch it is connected to the other branch like a sympodial kind of branching part of the carriage uh, i think uh, papaya it will cause some kind of disease in papaya and the compound is sympodial part of the intestines and the part of the lichy we can see compound is sympodial or branching kind of uh, uh, part of the spore morphology or sporangiospore morphology we can see here so these are all the different uh, shapes of sporangia uh, i told you just uh, uh lemon shaped sporangia but again some couple of other shapes also there but generally lemon shaped sporangia we used to call so globose phytophthora heavy this is the globose shaped uh, for our reference i have mentioned the uh, microscopic picture along with the uh, computerized picture also ellipsoid or elliptical phytophthora cryptogia this is ellips ellipsoid shape phytophthora cryptogia elongated phytophthora medi this is elongated the next one is a uh, uh, pyriform or apiriform part of the capsis this is a apiriform uh, or apiriform and the ovoid uh, ob sorry ovoid not uh, ovoid ovoid part of the palmivora this is a uh, ovoid uh, the next one is limniform or lemon shaped part of the cinnamum generally part of the cinnamum produces a lemon shaped sporangia and the next one is uh, ob ovoid uh, generally egg shaped part of the tropicalis this is a uh, ovoid and turbinate uh, this is a uh, where is the turbinate yeah this is the turbinate shape of the turbin turbinate and up uh, turbinate distorted there is the various shapes of the sporangia that is produced by the various uh, phytophthora pathogen so different types of antheridia that is produced by the womycota now we'll discuss like uh, amphigenus type paragenus type that we have discussed right now we will see in detail about what is this amphigenus and paragenus amphigenus in the sense ugonium and uh, Uh, generally ugonium which passes through the male reproductive organ that is antheridium imagine this is the antheridium where male reproductive organ is passing through the antheridium and form a globo structure above the antheridium is known as amphigenous type of antheridium this is the best example this is the antheridium and the ugonium which is formed above the antheridium that is called amphigenous type of antheridium best example is phytophthora paragenus means where male reproductive organ antheridium and female ugonium which is lies side by side if the antheridium and ugonium are side by side that is called paragenus the best example is pithia epigenus means antheridium above the ugonium and on the same hyphae so the antheridium above the ugonium with on the same hyphae this is called hyphae uh, epigenus epigenus sorry example is pithium epigenum and the hypogenus uh, generally antheridium below the ugonium so the antheridium is generally below the ugonium uh, on the same type of hyphae it is called uh, hypogenus uh, but uh, if you see this epigenus and hypogenus are more or less similar it look like and also resembles like amphigenus right so part of the long uh, sporangium uh, hypogenus so two most important things that uh, we need to take into various kinds of examinations are amphigenus and paragenus paragenus means antheridium and ugonium side by side amphigenus means uh, Uh, ugonium uh, just uh, form a globo structure above the antheridium is known as uh, amphigenus type of antheridium the next one is uh, in the peronospora else are generally downy mildew causing genera uh, the remaining all the genera like peronospora sclerospora peronospora bremia basidiospora sclerospora all are uh, downy mildew causing genera so this uh, downy mildew are sometimes called as uh, false mildews also uh, generally the most important feature are uh, the mycelium in higher plants and produces sporangiospores Uh, that actually protrude through the stomata from the stomata see this on the lower surface why white color downy growth is producing on the lower surface uh, uh, if you see this uh, white downy growth the downy growth we can observe uh, this kind of erected sporangiospores which actually came out from this stomata the multiple number of stomata will come actually so the downy mildew infect uh, uh, generally distinguishes from the powdery mildew by means of only powdery patches so more or less similar is same kind of downy growth uh, when it comes to powdery mildew powdery color powdery growth can be seen when it comes to downy mildew downy growth can be seen so this is the uh, major important uh, differences so the genus the first genus is a peronospora so here uh, i'm going to mention only the important uh, diseases caused by them along with uh, their sporangiospore characters so this genus uh, sporangiospore if you see this uh, sporangiospore uh, there are uh, uh, dichotomously branched sporangiospore can be seen with the branches somewhat reflexed 
the most important thing that we need to consider is dichotomously branched. So dichotomously branched type of sporangiospore can be observed in Peronospora. I repeat once again, all the downy mildew genera are characterized based on the sporangiospore. How this sporangiospore is hanging reverse in reverse direction. If you see on the uh, lower surface only the sporangiospores are formed. How it is hanging? Like what are all the kinds of branching or uh, sporangiospore branching? Based on the sporangiospore branching, this is the downy mildew are characterized. So the generally it will produce dichotomously branched uh, uh, sporangiospore. The best examples are onion downy mildew, peronospora destructor, blue mold, uh, peronospora tabacina. It is not only causes uh, downy mildews but also sometimes called as uh, leaf molds also. Spinach leaf mold, peronospora spinacea, anthurinium downy mildew which is caused by peronospora anthurini, and uh, downy mildew of carnation, peronospora dianthicola, soya bean downy mildew, peronospora mansurica. P. downy mildew, Peronospora VC, a downy mildew of uh, crucifers, which is caused by Peronospora parasitica. This is about Peronospora. The next genus is Pseudoperonospora. The special sporangiospore character is the sporangiospores are dichotomously branched at acute angle. And one more thing is uh, the tips are curved, pointed or curved tips uh, uh, where these sporangiospores are born. The best examples are cucurbits downy mildew, pseudoperonospora cubensis, and hemp downy mildew, which is caused by pseudoperonospora cannabina. The next genera is uh, plasmopora, very, very important genera. Uh, this uh, plasmopora generally causes uh, uh, downy mildews. Of course, all this genera that we are going to discuss are downy mildews only, but it got its importance when it infects uh, grape wine. It is the most de destructive pathogen when it comes to grape wine. And to have this uh, devastating effects also, uh, I recommend uh, one of my previously published videos how this plant pathology is actually started, why we need to study plant pathology, what are the uh, dangerous effects of this plant disease. There I have explained uh, uh, this uh, plasmopora. Uh, generally, the disease uh, before uh, uh, different kinds of disease that is caused by plasmopora. Uh, this uh, sporangiospore branches, if you see right angle with irregular shape, so right angle branches, uh, this is the plasmopora. So the most important this is grapes downy mildew, plasmopora viticola, sunflower downy mildew, plasmopora halstedi, palmilla downy mildew, plasmopora penicity, carrot downy mildew, plasmopora novia, and then sunflower also it causes various other kinds of disease that is caused by plasmopora helianthi. The most important one that we are going to see now is uh, grapes downy mildew, which is caused by plasmopora viticola. This is the life cycle of plasma parabiticola. I'm not going to explain in detail about how it is started. I will tell you. Just imagine the uh, woo spore is actually produced in the inside the host. When the leaves are fallen down on the surface, this uh, in the leaves the woo spores survive. I repeat once again in the in the leaf the generally woo spores are produced. Imagine just how this uh, cycle continues. From this uh, woo spore. Uh, it, when the leaves are fallen down, uh, this woo spore survive in uh, uh, fallen leaves. When the favorable environmental conditions, this woo spore germinates and produces uh, sporangia. This sporangia contains many number of juice spores with the rain with the help of rain splashes, with the help of uh, uh, wind currents, it will slowly go and land on the the sporangia slowly go and land on the surface of the leaf. From the surface, this usporia sheds, uspor releases, sorry, this sporangia releases sporangiospores, that is the juice spores, because it contains flagella. Slowly, this juice spores swim and settle on the leaf. By shedding the flagella, it form a end cyst. It form end cyst. From this end cyst, it will produce germ tube or germination tube, which enters into the inside the surface of the leaves. From where uh, this produces juice spores or juice spores insisted again they, they germinate from in the uh, leaf again what will happen it will produce go intercellular and intracellular it will produce lobos or globos kind of and draws the nutrient and after producing the mycelium they on the upper surface some oily kind of spots can be seen on the lower surface this is how the sporangiospores are hanging down so the woo spore when you come to the woo spore the woo spore is the sexual spore which is produced during the gametangel contact type so that is uh, initially we can also observe on the leaf when it is fall down on the leaf it can survive during unfavorable time by insisting themselves uh, at a very thick walled uh, cell uh, very thick walled structure around that itself and this life cycle continues i am not explaining in detail hope you guys know about this uh, plasma pro life cycle let me uh, do a different video about all this uh, life cycles uh, uh, in detail this is actually how the life cycle will continues 
and again this uh, wo spore infect again uh, the cycle will continues like this coming to the management uh, uh, there is a scientist called melard at pme melard which discovered uh, uh, a fantastic fungicide that is called bodomicher uh, which is used for the management of this uh, grapes or downy mildew i have explained in detail about the video that i will give in the description box the next genus is Basidiopora. This uh, Basidiopora monographed by Berento and uh, Dick in 1991. Uh, this uh, genus Basidiopora is characterized by a production of uh, club shaped swollen head uh, on the sporangia. Imagine it's like a sporangia spore, look like a sporangia spore. It will produce a club shaped sporangia, uh, which is actually born on the steric meta. This is the special feature of this Basidiopora. Chain Astas downy mildew, which is caused by Basidiopora enterospora, is one species. Uh, the next one is genus Bremia. Uh, Bremia lactose, which is causes uh, lettuce downy mildew. The next genus is the Sclerospora. It is supposed to be comes under uh, Sclerosporales. The way I am discussing here is now it is classified under uh, uh, generally the cricketal classification. This Sclerospora comes under Sclerosporales, but at present it is classified under uh, uh, Peronosporales only. That's why I mentioned here. Of course, uh, I will explain in detail about the Sclerospora there in the Sclerosporales also. But for having a, a you know a better knowledge that I am telling, this Sclerospora genera is now under this uh, 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 Peronosporaceae. So this Sclerospora generally characterized by uh, upright branches uh, near the end. So long stout upright branches can be observed. So pale millet, downy millet, Sclerospora graminicola. So downy millet of oats, crazy top of corn, wheat and barley, which is caused by Sclerospora macrospora, previously called as Sclerospora macrospora. So we have discussed the different types of downy milieu. Now we will see the comparison. Okay. So the genus Peronospora is generally characterized based on the sporangiospore branches. I repeat, based on the sporangiospore branches, this downy milieu are characterized. So sometimes it is also called as hairy fungi. So what are all the different kind of genera that we have discussed? Is Sclerospora, Peronospora, Plasmopora, Bestiospora, Bremia, and Peronospora. Perno, sorry, Pseudoperonospora. These are all the different downy milieu causing the downy milieu causing fungi. So now we are going to see just the general characters. Sporangiospore, their uh, sporangiospore, uh, sorry, downy mildew, type of downy mildew, and their uh, uh, branching characters. So the Sclerospora produces a swollen, long stout with upright branches. The example is combo downy mildew. This is how it will look like. The next one is Peronospora, dichotomously branched at acute angle. Example is onion downy mildew, uh, sorghum, maize, downy mildew, Peronospora sorghi. This is how these uh, branches will look like. Exactly dichotomously branched, right? At acute angle. The next one is a plasmopora, right angle with the blunt tips. Best example is grapes down in We can see the, all the branches are exactly to the right angle with the blunt tips. Basidiospora, club shaped with the swollen head. We can see club shaped with the swollen head. Example is China as down in Mili, Basidiospora and Tospora. The last one is a Bremia. So tips of the branches are cup shaped with four sterigma. It is actually resembles to the Peronospora, similar to Peronospora, but except in the terms of uh, the tips of the branches are uh, a cup shaped with four sterigma. Four sterigma will be present at the tip of the branches. Uh, general uh, other thing is uh, Peronospora. It is also like uh, dichotomously branched at acute angle. Uh, and taper to uh, gracefully curved points we can observe here the points are gracefully curved here example is cucurbits down emily peronus fluorospora cubensis these are all the various kinds of down emily along with their uh, uh, sporangios for characters and actually even see this uh, which disease will occur first down emily or powdery mildew actually powdery mildew disease occurs first let me study the just i will tell you i will study in a slow way so that you guys will understand the first disease appears in french wine it is grapes powder mildew that is erysifera in epidemic in 1845 epidemic this however the late blight of potato is epidemic this powder mildew of grapes is also epidemic in france in 1845 so that reduces the grape production around 80 percent but the production again raises due to the excessive application of sulfur fungicide to solve this problem an alternative to chemical treatment grape wines are actually introduced into united states of america so their root stocks are highly resistant to this powdery mildew but unfortunately uh, while importing the root stock the us also carried with a root like effect called phylloxera root effect again to solve this problem 
uh, the vineyards are replaced with the grafting stocks or uh, again the stocks were uh, grafted with the north american uh, root stocks of french grapes where the real problem starts during grafting this uh, north american root stocks a new fungi or destructive fungi is also gains their entry that is a downy mildew which is a plasma para viticola and causes the most destructive uh, disease that is a grapes to downy mildew in 1878 almost leads to 90% of the wine production shuts down and later millard discovered this uh, bodo mixture and again this uh, uh, grape production resumed so don't worry this point is a little bit new at present, Peronosporales contains three families. Before we discussed only two, right? Albuginaceae and Peronosporaceae. But at present, Pithiaceae is also they placed under this Peronosporaceae. That's why, see, this uh, they are simply changing the genera from there to here, uh, there, here to there. Don't worry about it. But the characters and the characteristics, of life cycle, important points, all the features uh, remains the same. So at the present, this Pernosporals contains three families by adding the PTSA. Uh, in cricketal classification, this Pernosporal contains uh, two families only, Albuginaceae and Pernosporaceae. If you see in Wiki, in Wikipedia also, it is mentioned that Pernosporals contains three families, Albuginaceae, Pernosporaceae, PTSA. So this is generally. So, but uh, in cricketal classification, this two is mentioned, uh, but at current, uh, PTSA, PTSA is also comes under this uh, Pernosporals only. Uh, as I told you, this is Schlerosporals also, before it was classified under Schlerospora and uh, uh, now it is classified under the genera, uh, this uh, Peronosporaceae or Peronosporals. About this uh, Schlerospora and Peronospirospora, I uh, explained, uh, I mean, uh, this order was especially explained in the Schlerosporal in detail about uh, according to the cricketal classification. So for further more information, uh, students can refer my book, A Vision into Plant Pathology, a complete student version. For further doubts and clarifications and guidance, students can reach us at www.geekyresearcher.com. Stay geeky and stay tuned. We are Team Geeky Researchers.